button. Mm -hmm. Hit it. Okay. Amen. I'm thankful and I'm grateful for us being out here today. We chose to sit outside and bring the gospel outside on today that those that choose to come by can stop by and partake in the bread of life. Jesus Christ being the bread of life, him being the very word of God, logos, amen. So today the word of God is coming forth from 1 Peter chapter 4. And you know how we do it at Cornerstone Deliverance Church. We are all about the word of God. So I'm going to ask that you stand on your feet because we're going to read the word responsibly. I will read the first verse and you can read the second. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. So just stand on your feet so we can read the word. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. The first verse says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. In regard to thee, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of disobedience. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Can you read? As every man hath received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom we, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ, suffering that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the Spirit of glory and God upon you, and that part his evil spoken of, but, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody, other men's business, and other men's business. Yet However, if any man so suffer as a Christian, as a Christian do not let be him ashamed, not be ashamed, but, but let him glorify God, God on his behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Amen. The Amen. word of God is blessed. You may be seated. And the scripture text today that we're going to be focused on comes from verse 11 and verse 17. And verse 11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it 
as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And that is telling us on today that we are judged as the oracles of God by him that came to us as a lamb to the slaughter by him that died on the cross for our sins. We shall be judged by our conversation that we keep for the word of God says in verse 17 for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God and we're going to focus on part a of verse 17 that the judgment first begins at the house of God. We are judged and there is a judgment on the message that we preach. And if I had a thought to leave with you, the thought would be judgment on the message we preach. The reason being is that there is only one message in Matthew 14, 26 to 37. The word of God says, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in in the day of judgment it also says but i tell you that every careless word that people speak they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment for by our words we will be justified and by our words we shall be condemned so i ask you today what message are you preaching now, what is the word that's coming off your mouth on today when god bring you before others that even the sinner man that needs to hear the gospel which is the only message that is to give off life what message do you share because what we are learning in the word of God today that by the message that we preach by the very message that we share we, we find that what can take place is life or death in the life of the hearers of it amen for now, and I just want to share a, defin a definition with you, for the scripture spoke of every idle word. Amen? So I looked up idle, and the word idle means inactive, unused, unoccupied, unemployed, disused, and inoperative. Amen? You will find that God has brought us with a price, and he has, we have been brought with a price by the blood of Jesus, amen, and, and that price has brought us from sin that we may be a witness for him to those that, that are still in sin. So you find that some of us that are in that are in the body of Christ, we're not doing what it is that God has called us to do. We're really not being a witness, amen, or if we're being a witness, we're not being a witness to the message uh, that we have been commissioned to, but it also say plenty is the harvest, but the laborers are few and God has foreknowledge of idlers in the body of Christ that not only are we idle with our conversation but we idle in, in, in our behavior amen because we are not workers in the vineyard like he has called us to be workers amen we are no longer slaves to the sin nature but slaves to righteousness and being slave to righteousness calls for us to be a witness for Christ and he didn't say be a witness any way you want to be he has governed us on how to be a witness he has unctioned us on what to say and he has set forth it in his word amen it says not only can the conversation okay it says just as in Eden Oh, I want to go back. I'm sorry. I moved too fast. Just bear with Pastor for a minute. Idlers, unemployed, jobless, out of work, redundant, um, avoid work, and lazy. Um, a person can be idle doing nothing. Amen. If you do nothing, you're idle. Idle conversation, frivolous, trivial, trifling, vain, minor, petty, shallow, worthless, unimportant, and insignificant. There's a lot of things that we can share in conversation when we meet people, even amongst ourselves. There's a lot of things that we can have to say, but the Word of God is telling us that if it's not what it is that He has unctioned us to say, it is considered to be idle. Amen? If you're not sharing the gospel, the gospel being the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that gives life to the sinner man we are speaking idly amen so 
I'm here to tell you one today that just as it is in Edom, man was given one commandment and that commandment was not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good, of good and evil. And man was supposed to be obedient unto that command, but we see that man failed. And still today, we see that man still continues to fail to be obedient to the command and the commissioning of God because the word of God tells us here that prior to the ascension of Jesus Christ, he commanded and commissioned those that believe to preach the gospel, the good news that affords life to a dying world. So the message that the church, those that believe, has been commissioned to preach, we're not talking about your church organization, for the word of God defines the church to be two or three gathered in his name. That's two or three spirit-filled believers gathered in his name, that they are the church that is not in your 501c3. No, it's not. It's not in your organization with your laws of man that's not where it is that if the spirit filled believers do not gather in your organization uh, your organization is an organization and not the church so we find here that prior to the ascension of Jesus Christ uh, he commanded commissioned those that believe to preach the gospel, the good news, amen, that the message of John the Baptist, who was a forerunner of Jesus Christ, someone pull up Matthew 3, we're going to read verses 1 through 2, because we want to know what that message was. What was the message that the angel Gabriel, that gave John the Baptist a rimmer word, it was given to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, is, um... The message should be in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. What was the message? In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judah and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is, who, this is he who was spoken of to the prophet Elijah. John the Baptist Isaiah. was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah to that he will be the one crying out in the wilderness and his message was a message of repentance. I'm here to tell you that the message has not changed, that even Jesus had a message, amen, and his message is in Matthew 4, 16 to 17, the first one that get it to read it. Matthew 4, 16 through 17, John the Baptist had a message of repentance. What was Jesus' message? The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light was dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. From that time on, him being the light in the world, he began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at near that the kingdom of God, the new heavens and the new earth, new Jerusalem shall be established here on the earth. Amen. Because the word of God says that the old heaven and the old earth shall pass away. Amen. So we find that John the Baptist had the message. The message was a message of repentance in Jesus Christ uh, of Nazareth. He had the message. He who is the light that John the Baptist bore witness to and that message was a message of repentance. Now tell me why today in the church uh, we have a whole bunch of messages and none of the messages call for, for the people to repent uh, from the sinner man to those that are carnal in the church that's not aligned with the things that God has set forth in his word. Our message should always contain a message of repentance. Uh, we should not be taking the God which is the message and working it around our religious agendas, our religious what do you call them? Uh, our religious gatherings and banquetings that, that, that it should be the message that everything else is worked around. There should be nothing else going on but the message of repentance. Amen? So this is a message for the church on today. The church is so caught up in religious agendas, banquets, celebrations, honoring each other, observance of religious audiences, and even in the midst of these things, they're still not having an altar call. That there's sinners amongst them and they're still not offering them Christ. It's not enough that you share the gospel, but you don't ask who would like to be saved. Hallelujah. It's not enough. He go both shabba baba both shabba. It's time to get back to the message. When we're going throughout our day and we're meeting people on the road, what message do you have? The message should not be 
what church do you go to? Who is your pastor? The message should be, do you know Jesus? That's what the message should be because there's many that proclaim to know God, but they proclaim to know him without Jesus. But I heard the word say that the, the son came that he may show us the father and that once you see the son that you have seen the father. So tell me, how is it that you can know God but not know who Jesus is and he not be Lord and Savior over your life? How can you know him? So you find that the reason why there is so much error, you find that the reason why the manifestation of the power of God is not taking place in all the earth like it should because Jesus Christ was founded on the manifestation of the power. He that is contained in the glory, he that is the glory, he that sits in glory in order for the glory to be manifested, we must have the right message. Amen. He's not showing up at any other name. He's only showing up at his name. When people ask the church who it is that they come to represent, we should not have our church organization name as who we're representing for the only name that is being represented in the earth in which there is power to save lives is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So what the church should be stating is that we come in the name of Jesus and the power of the blood of Jesus and in his spirit and the only thing that we do represent is amen the healings and the preaching of the gospel for the healing of the families and the land amen, amen. hallelujah so I ask you one today what message do you preach Amen? And it should be the same message day in and day out. Hallelujah. You find that John the Baptist did not change his message. Amen? Jesus did not change the message of repentance. Amen? So it is not becoming for the church uh, to decide on their own to change the message. Uh, it was not a message of prosperity, but you will find that if you give your life to Christ and you believe on him and his atoning sacrifice, that you will prosper for the word of God says that a man's soul shall, that a man's health shall prosper even as his soul prosper. And I challenge you to prove him on today because if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, you will find that everything shall be added unto you. So you, the message of the gospel is a message of prosperity, but uh, in order for you to receive it, there first must be a message of repentance. Hallelujah. So we thank God for all that he's doing on today. And I ask you, again, what message do you preach? Because the word of God says that we shall be judged on every message. Amen. Every message, every idle word that proceedeth out of, the, uh, of our mouth. And I tell you, the idle word is every word that is not the message of the gospel. If your words is not the message of the gospel, it is idle. Amen. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness here on today that is only one message? Hallelujah. And I say unto you, those of you that are here listening and those of you that will watch the video, hallelujah, that Allah, the God of the Muslims, did not have the message. Confucius did not have the message. Neither did Halasi Selassie, was it Hal Selassie? He did not have the message. Amen. For the message is the crucifixion. Hallelujah. It is the burial. And it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The only message that will bring life to the dying sinner man. That's the message. So those of you that have heard the message on today. For God so loved the world, he hath given his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That if you believe the words of the gospel on today, if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he has resurrected, that according to the word of God on today, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. And it's a message of repentance. And repentance mean to, to repent of the sin. Amen. And turn from that direction and walk in a direction that aligns you with the word of God. Hallelujah. 
So these are the words I ask you to repeat after me. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. In my sins. In my sins. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe that you are savior. That you are savior. Of my and Lord of my life. And Lord of my life. That you have resurrected. That you have resurrected. And because you have resurrected, that I live a new life in you. Wash me in your blood. Make me over. And baptize me with your Holy Ghost. And with fire. In Jesus' name. I pray. Thank God. Amen. Where you stand, you are saved. Hallelujah. By your faith in Jesus and his atoning sacrifice. Are you sanctified through this message? And are you justified? Amen. There is no other way that man can receive salvation, sanctification, or justification, but through the preaching of the only message that has been commissioned man to give, and that is the message of the gospel. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.